Well, hello, friends. Welcome to Carpo's channel. It's June of 2021 now. Looks like there's an ant on my camera. I've got to get him off. Climbing up my camera stand, how dare he. Today's topic, I'd like to talk a little bit about the fact that mainstream media is dead and how exciting that really is. You know, I'm a person who goes with society. I try to follow the laws and the rules my society sets forth if I feel that they are legitimate, if they help the institution, if they help us all as a whole succeed. Sometimes I'm even willing to make a sacrifice, just like over the last year, wearing masks, doing the best I can. But don't misinterpret that as ignorance or following authority. I also have my own opinions about what's been going on in this last, you know, epidemic situation here. Uh, something I have to be careful how I talk about because YouTube tends to censor anything that discusses these topics. If you're not a mainstream media outlet, that is. This is something that has frustrated people from the beginning. And I think that over the last year, what's happened within the media, on both left and right based media, has been such a good thing, such a phenomenal thing for society. The fact that you can go on any NBC or CNN YouTube video and a lot of them have more votes down than up. This is because people are actively seeking out and rebelling against bullshit news. Now, this can be taken too far. Sometimes people will assume that all news is fake and this is basically lazy research. It's a way of saying that every article is fake, all these stories aren't real because I don't want to take the time to figure out which ones are. The fact is the media mostly just basically overstates things, you know. They embellish on things. They do two things that really make mainstream media successful. They sensationalize things that are mediocre, and then they completely omit or don't discuss things that are extremely important. The media has been shifting so much, not just the people and how their opinions are on the media, but even the media itself is forced to change with the times. Not a, not a lot of people have cable anymore and it's a good thing but even recently the media has been criticizing Israel which is a you know I don't want to get into that aspect of discussing the controversy between Israel and Palestine and these ongoing battles but let's just say that Israel has always been a supported by the United States financially and with weaponry and uh, uh, a strategic point in the Middle East for us. The opinion of the media has always been to support what the government tells them, to support what the Pentagon is saying, to support what the, let's just say, the evangelical Christians of this country are saying, because they are 30% of the population, and uh, evangelicals support Israel, because Israel is where the end times are supposed to happen, and it's, or I should say, Temple Mount, and that whole controversy has been so skewed by the media over the years that people don't even know what to believe. Now that we have so much information at our fingertips, we are at a crossroads for knowledge, which means that some people are going to choose to seek the truth, which is going to counteract the narrative that they were taught. And once you do that, you might start to believe the other side of the story. But be careful not to get caught up in thinking that one side has all the answers. The most crucial thing is that we're balanced and honest with our assessment of what's going on. And that's not always easy because the information is often propaganda, it's often BS. Over the last year with what's happened with the COVID crisis, oh man, I've had to change a lot of my opinions on things. In fact, in the, in the beginning, I, just like a lot of Americans, wanted to trust uh, Fauci and think that he knew what he was talking about. I thought, well, I don't know the guy, I've never seen him before. He seems to be an authority on the topic. No information is coming out about his emails and how he'd been conversing about this gain-of-function research that had been going on in the Wuhan laboratory and how these things had uh, been kind of swept under the rug. Now, let me just tell you this. A small, a short story went back in about March. Maybe, actually, it was more like, I think, uh, January or February of 2020. I went down to my local store, Fred Meyer, and I bought 
all their masks that they had, the uh, um, the N95 masks. And I remember talking to the guy at, at the counter and saying, well, yeah, that I'm just stocking up because these will probably be sold out because that virus will be coming here. And the, he gave me this look like, oh, whatever, it's not going to make it here. It'll never happen. Well, it did happen. And it was inevitable that it was going to happen. But the point was that people are often in denial until something happens. And especially because what we found out was that Fauci had been saying, don't wear N95 masks, you don't need them. The whole point now we know was to actually make sure that there were enough for health workers. But I knew that even back then. And I also knew that there was a Wuhan laboratory back in February, just like everybody else did in the world, that was in the same city where there was an outbreak, that happened to be working on gain-of-function research, which was partially supported by the United States, and dealt specifically with bat-derived coronaviruses. There's a philosophical term called Occam's razor. That's O-C-C-A-M-S. It can also be Occam as in O-C-K-A-M. It doesn't matter how it's spelled. Occam's razor is the simple statement that the most likely story is usually the real story, the truth. It doesn't mean it always is. It means that you start there and you work your way backwards and figure out whether or not it's not true. Now, now is where I talk about the dangerous slippery slope. Now that we're finally, as a society, waking up, there's a lot of birth pangs, if you will. A lot of folks think that society is collapsing. And in a way, it probably is, but in another way, it's a revival, a renewal. In fact, it will go down in history as a waking up point for people. You know, a great example, and sometimes I use an example that comes into my head while I'm speaking as I am here, is um, I watched a video where somebody was talking about how they'd torn down a statue of a slave trader in the UK. And it showed one person saying, well, they're destroying our history. And the other person said, aren't they making history? And silence ensued. It was, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> history is an ongoing process. Time is really not relative or relevant to, um, you know, remembering things. You are going to remember things if they're written down, if they're documented. But um, anyhow, here's where it gets dangerous, and this is where I want to say that there's a point. Somebody's running a loud vacuum now, and I hope that's not too annoying on the video. But I'm going to make my basic points, and it shouldn't be too much longer here. The media itself um, is slowly disintegrating and dissolving because they're out for only money, they don't really care about informing you. And once the news leaves that premise of wanting to help people and inform people, there's always going to be a money incentive. This is the thing people don't realize. They complain that the media is all about money. And I say, well, do you pay the news channels that you watch to watch their content? And my question would be, why not? These people have cameras they have to buy, they've got SD cards, they've got computers, they have uh, buildings where they all get together, journalists that go out in the field, you know. You don't have to pay to go to Associated Press and get the headlines, but it costs millions of dollars every day just to produce that content. Should we have free knowledge? Maybe it should be funded by the state, but the fact is, it's when it's funded by the state, that can be controlled as well. That's what happens in China and elsewhere. So there's a very difficult hurdle to cross. If it's, if it's dealt with and funded by the state, public broadcasting, it can be dominated by the state's words. If it's funded by ad revenue, then the shareholders want to see a profit return. Therefore, the only way to get people to watch is to be as crazy and wild about the stories as you can. So, once the media starts dying, alternative media takes over. And we start out with people like Alex Jones, you know, or guys like Rush Limbaugh starting his own show. I mean, he died a while back, I think. I don't recall if anybody really cared. I'm going to be brutally honest here. Um, Roger Ailes, I think, a while back, too. When, when a lot of these extreme propaganda-carrying media personalities 
pass away. There's kind of a, <clears throat> oh well, attitude. I care about all people, but I really don't care about those who spread bullshit propaganda, and they are better off gone, as far as I'm concerned. This world needs people who are honest and fair and truthful, but not for the sake of just money. It has to be done for the right reasons. And finding a media personality who does it just because they love journalism, that's not hard. But if they tell the real stories, they get pushed aside. When the media dies, alternative media takes over. And alternative media has turned out to be one of the most dangerous commodities that we have on the market today. I mean, you have guys like Ben Shapiro spreading his bullshit. You've got the Proud Boys. You've got all these people on, on the right who are complaining about leftist policies. But then you have these leftist groups who are just as bad, who want to cancel everybody who says anything, uh, who, you know, want to change every single law just in spite of other people who just... When people say a lot of these people just want to hate for the sake of hating, I thought, no, that's not true. But it is true. I found that out. It's true. Um, this is why I'm a liberal who's offended by liberals. As a, that's a joke. I'm not offended. Um, offensive. Being offended is kind of one of the jokes. It takes. It would take a hell of a lot to offend me. I don't even know if it's possible at this point. But I think that that's where where we're at. We've wrapped ourselves up in our egos so much we can't even see who we are. And so the alternative media is turning it into another circus for the same reasons. They still have sponsors, they still sell pills, they still sell vitamins, like Alex Jones. I go to InfoWars, I go to Breitbart to see what other people are saying. And unfortunately, when I go to those sites, they're not funded by the people or by the viewers. The viewers obviously don't care because every main page is just a giant ad about some supplement that'll make you a better man, a greater man, a stronger man. Folks that can't see through that need to check themselves. So I'm going to go down a short list of things that could be worse. As I said, the media is bad, but alternative media, we need to keep them in check to make sure that they're not just as bad. Let's go to the police. A lot of people want to abolish the police. What do you think happens when you abolish the police completely? When you have nobody looking into anything that's going on? Well, you have a lot of crime, for one, but you also have militias who take over, and neighborhood watch and patrols, which are just as likely, if not more so, to shoot someone, kill someone, or something happened, because they're even less trained than the horribly trained cops that we have in this country. And police are a whole other story. I have a full podcast about it. Check it out if, if you want to hear my view on that. Um, so that's media and police. Then we have government. If you get rid of government, the anarchist mentality to totally abolish government, you have a secondary government that takes over. You have leaders and chiefs and people who are even more arrogant and I'm going to get to how to solve this problem because the next one is like, for example, terrorists. We've seen what happens when you get rid of a tyrant in a country or a tyrant leader. They might even still have to have an election to win again. But if you take them out, you end up with Al-Qaeda or one of these other groups that basically say, look what you've done to my country. I have nothing left to lose. I'm going to destroy your country. When you eliminate terrorists, you leave a power vacuum, which can even bring in more problems. They call it the Hydra. Cut off a head, two more appear. This is a well-known idea and uh, something that goes way back. So the key, the answer to this, is a two-part, very simple idea I came up with. Because I could sit here and complain about the way the world operates. But if I don't have a solution to it, then what's the point in complaining? And I think that's why I'm bothered by media. They're always out there talking about the problems. Alternative media, too. Look at what the liberals are doing. Look at what the conservatives are doing. I'm like, so what is the effing solution to this problem, right? Two things. And accountability and accessibility. And perhaps that would be a good title for this video because... That's the main point I want to drive home before I go here. I'm no expert on how the world works. I'm just an individual 
sitting here on my back porch talking about the things that I see. But I think a lot about these things. I am always trying to process and understand how to make the world better because as a pipe dream as it might be, you know, I can see a somewhat utopian future for at least the people who choose to live it. And I don't have a choice. I have kids, young kids and an older son. People who want to live a life that's as rich and full as their ancestors. And it's looking grim for a lot of people. But it doesn't have to be. Like I said, it's birth pangs. So, to define what I mean by accountability and accessibility, the main two things that I think hold us back from really getting the truth and feeling like we're part of part of our country, society, whatever it might be. Accountability means if a leader, a police officer, the media, a government official, a business, anyone does something wrong, that they are not only held accountable, but that this accountability is recognized by the company, by the agent, by the person, the media organization that said the thing. It's painful for a news agency to say, to post, we were wrong. But they do it all the time. They hate it, but they do it. Because sometimes you have to. Holding people accountable is important. The problem is with our leaders, we can't access them. We can't get to the people to tell them how we feel. You can write a generic email to some state official or a president. They're never going to give a shit what you said. And that's the point of, a, of accessibility. Being able to access your leaders. This means if, you're, if your local media fucks up, you go down and you're able to talk to them and say, hey, this isn't right. This is the wrong story. If somebody publishes an article about you, you can go correct it and that they'll apologize. Accessibility to the police. This means being able to look at their records to see who the cops arrest and why. You'd be surprised these things aren't publicly accessible or shared between police departments. Um, to make police a accountable for the actions they take, but also accessibility to the body cameras. Portland Police, Vancouver Police don't even have body cameras. It's not regular uh, around the country. Meanwhile, every, every dude in the world who does anything outdoors has a GoPro. It could even be part of a uniform to just wear a regular body camera. It's a very simple solution, which makes a huge difference. Police do not like being filmed or watched, just like the media does not like being called out, just like government agents don't like being called out, leaders don't like being called out, and terrorists don't like being called out. Nobody likes being called out for bullshit that they, you know, claim. And I think that it is one of the reason is because is obvious because people don't like being wrong, but it has to be said. You know, public shaming, public opinion, public punishing, these aren't bad things. Things like stockades in the past, where they'd humiliate people by putting them in a stockade and throwing fruit at them. That seems absurd and archaic. But today people are starting to think, hmm, this kind of starts to, you understand, right? The same thing with the even public, I, I, I guess I shouldn't go that far, but, you know, uh, there's a reason why people who did horrible things are publicly executed, for example. It's not that the public revels in seeing death, it's that we like justice. And you can't get justice when nobody's listening to you. When your government doesn't care, media doesn't care. When the terrorists are out there, you know, I should say when people are using terrorism as an excuse for their own version of it which is what our own government's been doing for a long time. And when the media refuses to hold them accountable. We're going through some changes. So those are my thoughts on it. And uh, I guess to sum it up, as I said, we need accountability and accessibility. We need people to be held accountable for the things they do wrong. If they're in a position of power and they abuse it, or they do something wrong, hey, you took that position. You took an oath, whether you're a police officer or a politician, to defend the Constitution, to defend the people. 
right? Meanwhile, that's not the reality of what's going on. So that's accountability. People need to be punished. There's something that police have, which is basically they, they cannot be punished, and this is changing, and Colorado was the first state to actually change this. Um, I don't recall the term for it, but uh, where basically if you shoot someone in the back when they're running away, you know, you, you're not held accountable for anything you do under that, under duress, under the, you know, but any other career you have, if you make a mistake, you're called out on it. So um, it's a dangerous precedent. It's a slippery slope to allow people to get away with shit. And people like seeing justice. I mean, I can only go by my viewpoint, but just look at the movies and the shows people like to watch. They like seeing people get punished for the things they do wrong. And that's built within us. It's in our genetics. Just like any other species of animal, you know. So those are my thoughts on it. It could be worse. We may have a fucked up system, but... Uh, if we allow it to be overwhelmed by the alternative version of that, it could be just as bad. So as long as whoever, whoever we're listening to, whoever's telling us what the truth is, as long as we remember, can they be held accountable when they lie? And do they recognize that? And, or when they're wrong? And are they accessible? Can you communicate with them? And um, I think with those two points, we can pretty go far as a society, but open to your opinions as well. Peace out. Thank you to all the subscribers who leave these awesome comments and make this channel continuously worth having for the last 10 years. And uh, shit, almost 11 now. I can't believe time goes by so fast, you know. Peace out. Thanks for coming to Carbo's channel, yo.